religion in Nazi Germany, a complex and controversial relationship. The relationship between Nazi Germany and religion was intricate and fraught with contradictions. While many leading Nazis were raised in the Christian faith, the regime's approach to religion was far from straightforward. Adolf Hitler, for instance, had a Catholic upbringing, but his public stance on Christianity was often a matter of political convenience rather than genuine belief. Hitler's religious background. Adolf Hitler's early life was steeped in Catholic tradition. His mother, Clara Hitler, was a devout Catholic who ensured that young Adolf received a Catholic education. He attended a Catholic school and even served as a choir boy in his local church. However, after leaving home, Hitler drifted away from formal religious practices. Although he occasionally referenced Christianity in his speeches and writings, his relationship with the church was largely superficial. In public, Hitler often spoke about Christianity and invoked God to align himself with the majority of Germans who identified as Christian. For example, in his 1928 speech, Hitler emphasized the Nazis' tolerance for Christian ideas and portrayed the movement as inherently Christian. He argued that the Nazis aimed to unite Catholics and Protestants against modern moral decay. This rhetoric was designed to appeal to a predominantly Christian audience and gain broader support. Private views and political strategy. Despite his public pronouncements, Hitler's private views on Christianity were critical. He saw Christian teachings on compassion and charity as weaknesses that undermined his vision of a strong, nationalist state. Hitler believed that the values of Nazism nationalism, obedience, and loyalty to the state were at odds with religious teachings. He feared the political influence of churches, which he saw as potential obstacles to his agenda. The decline of religious adherence in Germany during the early 20th century, partly due to the impacts of World War I and the secular values of the Weimar Republic, set the stage for this complex relationship. The Great Depression further accelerated the decline in church attendance, although a majority of Germans still identified as Christians in the 1930s. Protestant churches, a divided response. The Protestant churches in Germany were divided in their response to Nazism. Some branches, notably the Deutsche Christen or German Christians, enthusiastically supported the Nazis they saw Hitler as a transformative figure who could revitalize German Christianity. The Deutsche Christen aimed to create a Reichskirch, a state church loyal to the Nazi regime. This faction often incorporated anti-Semitic elements into their religious doctrine, advocating for the expulsion of Christian converts of Jewish heritage. In contrast, other Protestant leaders resisted the Nazis. In 1933, the Foreign Opbund or Emergency League of Pastors was established to oppose the creation of a pro-Nazi state religion. Led by Martin Nimmerler, this group defended the independence of Protestant churches and criticized Nazi racial policies. The Bekennende Kircher or Confessing Church, formed in 1934, further consolidated resistance against Nazi attempts to control religious institutions. Despite facing severe repression, members of the Bekenende Kircher, including Niemöller, continued to oppose Nazi policies, risking their lives to protect Jewish Christians and resist Nazi ideologies. Catholicism and the Reichskunkadat. The relationship between Catholicism and the Nazi regime was initially conciliatory but soon soured. The Catholic Church, long desiring a concordat with the government to safeguard its rights, saw an opportunity when Hitler came to power. Negotiations for the Reichskunkadat, an agreement between the Vatican and the Nazi government, began in April 1933, despite the Nazis' simultaneous campaign of anti-Catholic intimidation, including closing Catholic publications and arresting outspoken Catholics, the Concord Act was signed on July 20, 1933. The Reichskunkadat was a diplomatic victory for the Nazis. 
it ensured that Catholic organizations and schools could continue to operate, but it also restricted the church's political involvement. Catholic bishops had to pledge allegiance to the Nazi government, and the church was prohibited from engaging in political activities. While the Concordat guaranteed some religious freedoms, it also aimed to neutralize the church's political influence. Nazi violations and Catholic resistance. The Nazis began violating the Reichskonkordat almost immediately after its signing. They shut down Catholic publications, restricted church activities, and attacked Catholic institutions. The regime's efforts to suppress Catholicism included arresting priests, launching anti-Catholic propaganda campaigns, and targeting Catholic schools. In response, Pope Pius XI issued the encyclical Mit Brennen de Sorge, or with burning concern, in March 1937. This document condemned the Nazis' breaches of the Concordat and criticized their ideology. The encyclical denounced the Nazi glorification of race and the state, asserting that such idolatry distorted God's creation. The Nazi response was harsh, the Gestapo, the secret police force responsible for enforcing Nazi policies and suppressing opposition, conducted raids, made arrests, and intensified the persecution of Catholic clergy. Persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses Jehovah's Witnesses, a small but significant religious group, were also persecuted by the Nazis. Their refusal to pledge allegiance to the state or participate in military service made them targets for Nazi repression. The Nazis formally banned the religion in 1933, and by 1936, Jehovah's Witnesses were being arrested and sent to concentration camps. They were marked by a purple triangle in the camps, and many suffered extreme persecution or death. In summary, Nazi attitudes toward religion were complex and often contradictory. While many Nazis were raised as Christians and used religious rhetoric to appeal to the public, the regime's primary goal was to subjugate or eliminate religious institutions that could challenge its authority. Hitler's public support for Christianity was a strategic move rather than a reflection of his true beliefs. Protestant and Catholic responses to Nazism varied widely, from enthusiastic support to staunch resistance reflecting the diverse ways in which religion intersected with politics during the Nazi era.